Hey y'all, welcome. Um, this is my very first video. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I've been wanting to get into this space for quite a while right now, so I've been figuring out how to waste doing it, looking at other videos, uh, kind of just gaining some inspiration. So, um, um, apologize for the very raw format of it, but if this goes well, I plan on making it a little bit better here and there. So, my last posting on Calico Canyon Rail Company, I had posted some pictures of a model I'm going to be doing. It's the um, uh, Atlas Gorge by Foscale Models. And I'm doing the mill section. Very cool. I'm really excited for it. I really love the roof line. So I've been really uh, diving into it, taking my time. Uh, now that I've done a few models already, and uh, I feel confident enough to get into it and um, very methodical about it, um, detailing as much as I can. So this is the first step. So uh, my very first um, thing that I've done was uh, created a wash and I've been using this wash for a bit now and it's very basic. So it's a alcohol based I use 91% uh, alcohol, and I find this works uh, really well. Not only does um, it gets all into the cracks and crevices of the wood and in the grain, um, it dries very fairly quickly because it's 91% alcohol. There's very little water in it too, so there's very minimal warping. So, and what I use for an Indian ink is the Dr. Martins, I guess you could say, <laughs> the Bombay Black India ink. And I put it all in this little tiny jar. This is about six ounces worth. And I kind of just through trial and error have figured uh, for what works for me is 72 drops of ink with six ounces of 91% alcohol. Um, and that works well. And the um, darkness that it gives just right out of this little bottle right here is this right here and it's pretty dark um not too dark not very dark there's still you can still see some of the uh, original color uh, bleeding through but i like it it works well and i just use that as um a kind of like an average point and if i want it lighter i just put more alcohol on it make smaller batches and just do it that way. All right, so I got my alcohol out, um, went ahead and stirred up my mixture, and I usually just do everything um, as not as light as I can, but I wanna be able to have a little bit of control over it. Uh, so we're actually gonna dilute it, and uh, initially I like to just dilute it 50-50, so one part of each. Um, so we got our ink, we got our alcohol. We have our soft bristle brush. I really love these brushes. Uh, just got these for Christmas. Uh, they're like a red sable brush. Uh, they're firm, uh, but soft. So they do well with the wood. So we'll just mix that up a bit and just start applying it onto the wood. This will give a nice uh, gray finish to it once it dries. Uh, and I like some variations. So what I'll do is just load some up on the brush and just certain spots on there will just be more than others. And of course, if we're going for um, a realistic look, everything is layered. It's, that's the secret is layering, uh, whether it's colors or foliage, uh, dirt, rocks, whatnot. Everything is just layered. So this will be uh, the beginning for that. So we'll set that aside to dry roller for a bit. And I have a um, piece of clapboard siding here. And I don't do this for everyone. I just usually make one big batch
but yeah. So let's just get my brush. I'll stir this up a little bit. And same. So we'll just cover it all. And we'll just put a little bit of extra on there to just let it set. That's not going to work. Let's do that. And there's another piece. This is probably my favorite part of modeling is the layering and um, not making sure, but I guess making sure that everything just looks the way it's supposed to look or the way it looks what you want it to look like, I guess. Anyways, so we'll just leave some there. We'll set this aside. All right. So after a nice quick blow dry, um, these pieces are coming out really well. Um, uh, let's start with the this one right here. Um, so you can kind of tell um, there's a lot of graying and silvering of the wood. It's getting right into the grain from the alcohol. And it's giving it a really nice color to it. Nice little gray finish with some of the new that's still kind of in there. Um, one of the best parts I love about this is um, it's alcohol based. And since these pieces have no bracing, you kind of see that there is very, very little warping, at least in this stage. Uh, these pieces will eventually get braced uh, because eventually there's going to be some acrylic paint on there. And since that's water based, uh, it, there's going to be a lot more warping. Like with this one right here, there's very, there's a little bit of warping in it, but not, not very much. Nothing that can't be easily corrected with some bracing. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to pull out my box, my box O pastels. Uh, so this is what I use uh, to get my natural wood look. Uh, I don't use all of this. This is kind of like a basics for wood. Um, you, you could use it for some rust, for earth tones, for some ground covering. But these, these are pastels. And these are Rembrandt pastels. Um, they're a little pricey, uh, depending on where you go. On Amazon, I've seen them as high as $8, $9 a stick. Um, this is one stick. I just chopped it in half so that way it can fit in a box better. Um, but what I use are just three colors. Uh, it's raw umber. and But they're different shades of raw umber. This is being the darkest. This is kind of a medium tone and a lighter tone right up there. And I'll show you again. So we have this raw umber, which is a nice dark color. Uh, this is a medium tone. <clears throat> and this is a lighter tone. And we'll actually go in that order. We'll start with our darkest tones and we'll work our way up to the lightest tones. So this is the fun part. It's the part part I enjoy. Um, I think one of the reasons why I love painting because it just creates a mess. So uh, I bought a, um, a pane of glass at like Home Depot over my mat, my cutting mat. And I love it. I think it's great, especially for painting or for doing projects like this. Uh, and I just took some duct tape and taped the edges of it because they're really sharp. Um, so we're going to take our Rembrandt stick, our pastels, and I'm just going to scrape some onto the mat here. Um, what's great about this is you don't need that much. Um, these will actually last, last quite a while. This is the medium tone. And I, what I do is I put some alcohol in these uh, after I scrape them off like so and I paintbrush them onto the wood and since this is going to be 
nothing but an alcohol base. Don't really have to worry about the wood warping. All right, so I'll just dip my brush in alcohol. We're gonna start with the dark and just basically pour a little bit on there. Um, again, I like to start with light, like a light coating. It's always easier to darken things up than it is to lighten things up. So I put uh, quite a bit of alcohol in it. Um, and if I don't like it, I'll just put on another coat. Again, the best part about these things is it dries very quickly. So, yeah. So we'll go ahead and start. So what I like to do as far as the darker tones is I like to create um, some variation in color. And one of the ways uh, that we could do this is by not painting all of it or maybe painting like a third of it. And obviously I want some boards that are lighter than others, some that are darker than others. So if I want something that's darker, I'll just go ahead and put a little bit more paint on there. Or I'll just keep it like this and don't put anything on it. Or just put a little bit of it on it. So we got that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the rest of the pieces. And when I do this, it's always in the direction of the grain. So it really picks up the grain and the wood. And if I do something like this, it really drives the color or the pigment into the wood itself. And sometimes I'll just lightly go over it so that way what ends up is a lighter variation of that color once it starts to dry. So many things you could do with this. It's just, it's awesome. Go ahead and cover that. That'd be good. A little bit more pigment into some of these boards. Let's leave it at that. For a clapboard, um, very similar. Same thing, the grain of the wood. And I like to use the fine tip of the paintbrush to get into the, the clapboard boards themselves. This one's just a scrap piece I wanted to show you with, with clapboard siding. So I don't have it braced. Uh, it is warping a bit. It is a smaller piece. All right. So one of the best things about having a glass top is the cleanup is just easy. Paper towel. Dip it into a little bit of alcohol. Just clean it up. We'll start on the medium tone, which is this one right here. Uh, if you're not too careful and you don't put enough alcohol, it really comes on strong. And if that's the look you're going for, go for it. All right, so for this one, for this color, lighter shade, I'll get a little bit more onto the boards and cover a little bit more than I did with the darker. And by now I'll cover more, not more, but I'll really uh, brush the pigment inside of the wood to really give it a nice darker color for more variation. All right. So far, so good. 
See how it's dried already? Already it's looking pretty good. All right, so we'll just leave that like that. So again, this is already dried. This is one of the benefits of this. Kind of speeding along here. I don't want the video to be too long, I'm trying to get it under 10 minutes. Alrighty then, it'll do this piece. So, perfect. All right. So this one, this is the lighter shade. And so this one, um, I treat it a little bit differently. So uh, I add more alcohol to this because this is going to get covered 100% over everything and so this will tie in all the colors so this will give it like a faded lighter faded color um so this one i really love so that will just go on everywhere like it's been you can see um looks pretty good you can see some of the variations in color um from light to dark Especially right in through here uh, I really love this technique I mean you can you could just use it like this with just the two colors uh, but I like to give it that nice faded dirty look so even with this one it's pretty cool so far Right. Really excited about this. I mean, you can even have this like just a standalone just with the wood grain itself on your models. All right, so I blasted it with the blow dryer and this is what we got. So it's a nice, more faded with that last application of that lighter color. Ties in all the colors together. And it gives a really nice weathered wood appearance. You got some color variation with some lighter boards, darker boards. This is pretty cool. I like this. Really, really like this. Now... Uh, <sighs> What I've done um, in the past before is after this, I would wash it with a lighter black wash. But at this point, it really doesn't matter. But with uh, if you have structures with nail holes, if you take that black wash at the end of it, after everything with all the colors, the pastels, and then put a black wash with it, uh, the nail holes tend to come back. So as you're we're putting pigment on it, the nail holes tend to fade just a little bit. Uh, but once that dries and you put a, a nice lighter uh, black wash, it really brings the nail holes out. So this is what I have so far on other pieces that I've done. Eh, very cool. This is probably my most favorite piece here. Uh, it really shows a lot of variation in the wood. But I'll post some pictures up of these finished and in a, in a different lighting. So you can probably see it better than this nice cool lighting. So anyways, if you liked what you saw, uh, leave a comment. Um, if you want to subscribe, go for it. If I get some more positive feedback, I'll make more videos. I would like to document this whole build because I'm just doing the mill portion of the Atlas Gorge. And I'm going to add another structure to that. So I'm going to get back something else to that. So 
yeah, if you liked it, uh, let me know what you thought. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon. Bye.